Hello, my name is Claudia Morris Barclay. I've been traveling on the road full time since 2019 in a van named Ro. My original goal was to have a tiny house on wheels and uh, I ended up joining a group that became Tiny House Atlanta way back when and the goal was to change the laws in Atlanta so that you could ha live in a tiny house on wheels. So I was working with that organization for a while and things just weren't happening fast enough, not because of the organization but because of legality. And so my thought was, okay, what's the next option? What else can I do? I was getting restless. At the time, I had started my entertainment and lifestyle consulting uh, company, and part of that is space design and lifestyle management and things like that. And I wanted to have a uh, office that moved with me. I had stumbled across van life on YouTube, and I was like, from a design perspective, this seems really cool. This would be a great office. Let me go see if I could turn something like this into an office. So I did a little bit of test driving, and I was like, okay, this could be cool. And then uh, a month or so later, I was working with a client, and I was injured in that home. And at that point, I was like, okay, stop. Shut everything down, and let me figure out what I want to do with my life, because it was a pretty severe injury. And at that moment, I was like, hmm, I wonder if this van thing could be my close ticket to a tiny house on wheels instead of it being an office. And so I made the decision then, then let's buy a van. Let's move into a van. Let's travel the country as I recovered from this injury. And so that's what I did. I bought a van. And between the time of test driving that first van when I thought it was going to be an office to buying a van and deciding to build it was about two and a half months. And so I bought the van and I had never built anything in my life. I assemble Ikea furniture. I have experience in design, but I've never made a picture frame, let alone furniture. And I got a bunch of hand tools and said, okay, let's hit the road and let's build as we go. My van is a 2017 Ram Pro Master 3500. It's a high top, so it's tall enough for someone six foot two to stand inside. It is a 159 extended body, so it's an extra long Pro Master. So there's room for a whole house inside. Come take a look. All right, so when I don't wanna get set up in the back, I wanna get a little bit of work done. I do hang out in the front here and I just push this curtain aside here and I have a swivel seat and I hang out in my swivel seat over here and then I have an extension on my countertop here that I added a little wooden section that pops up and I'm able to do computer work, I can write, I enjoy the view. I can just hang out and, and when I'm cooking in the kitchen, especially too, if I need a little extra counter space, I'm able to do that on this extension as well. And so then when I'm ready to do something else or move on to the next part of my day, I just hit the clips that are on the bottom here and fold this part down. I turn my swivel seat back around, lock it into place and close the curtains. All right, so this is the main storage wall of the van. It was a really big priority for me because like I said, I like to stay fancy, so clothing is the ideal thing. And with my background in space design, I prioritize closets. And so I literally took the closet from in my apartment exactly as it was, pulled it out, reconfigured the shelving and put it into um, the van. And so I built everything around having a full size shower and having a full size closet. And one of the things that was also important to me is having art, art that I collect along my travels, art from friends, any combinations of things. So I put doors on all of these structures to allow me to display my art that I've collected or that my friends have created. And so on this wall, I have some pieces that I've picked up on the shower door here, which is there. And then on the closet doors, I use that as a gallery space for all of my favorite pieces of art. And in case you're wondering, all of these things are permanently affixed to these doors. So I've got double-sided tape or Velcro or in some cases glue. So they don't move when I'm rumbling up and down the road. So this is my shower here, and it's again part of this main storage wall. And if you'll notice, this part of the shower juts out just a little bit more than everything else. It creates kind of a small hallway between the edge of my kitchen here and the bathroom, but it was important to me to have close to a full-size shower as a larger person. So my shower pan is actually 32 by 32 inches, while everything else is about 24 inches. And so all I have to do to get into the shower is ease by this way, which it's a van, it's okay. It's okay to have a little bit of space. And then I unlock this bifold door that I've created, which also has a little bit of hook storage on the side. And then when I swing the shower door open, I end up with a storage wall. 
And that was one of my main priorities as well. One of the reasons why there's doors on everything is to make sure that I can have storage and that I can display art. And so let me hop in the shower and show you exactly how big this thing is. And here, let me open it all the way for you. There you go. There's room for me in here, plenty, and then room for storage. So as you can see, I have all of these storage baskets. This is a door and wall rack, and all of the baskets actually unhook, and I can adjust them on this track as needed. But I keep overflow things like cleaning supplies down here, bug spray. I've got more cleaning supplies, overflow toiletries, a little bit like, you know, your girl always needs a razor. And then I have easy access to them in the bathroom. And actually, this is one of my favorite things in my storage one. People say you can't be tidy in a van. Look at this. This is my iron. The tiniest iron I've ever seen in life. Tiny iron, tiny space, tiny life. <laughs> so in this shower space here, I've got a full shower pan. I've got a nature set composting toilet and plenty of shower room. And so when it's time to take a shower, I can just pull this curtain and take a shower with plenty of ventilation. Or if you're just going to use the restroom, I can close the door here this way and have plenty of privacy from everywhere else. So I own my own entertainment and lifestyle consulting business. On the entertainment side, I do artist development, vocal coaching, voiceover. I also do creative production for YouTube stars and business development. So let's teach an artist how to make money from their craft. And then on the lifestyle side, I do space design, storage design in particular. So closets, home offices, garages. And I wanted to take all of my education and kind of put it together in a custom business and work that suited me. Thanks to Policy Genius for sponsoring this video. Most of our relationship, we've lived in a tiny house, traveled with it, and worked together. We've been about, what, like eight feet apart. <laughs> this is about as far apart as we can get in our tiny house, so. Basically. Yeah. So last week when he was gone for a couple days, of course, what happened, I had a nightmare <laughs> about what I would do if he was gone forever. So this is probably a good time to start thinking about life insurance. Policy Genius makes it easy to compare quotes from over a dozen top insurers all in one place. You could save $1,300 or more per year on life insurance by using Policy Genius to compare policies. Eligible applicants can be covered in as little as a week thanks to an award winning policy option that swaps the standard medical exam requirements for a simple phone call. But how does it work? First, head to policygenius.com backslash tiny house. In just minutes, you can work out how much life insurance coverage you need and compare personalized quotes to find your best price. When you're ready to apply, the Policy Genius team will handle the paperwork and scheduling for free. So head over to policygenius.com backslash tiny house to get started today. So this is a full size five foot closet. It's exactly the same size as the closet in my apartment that I left. And so to accomplish all the things that I needed to in a closet, I needed to have a bunch of doors and have them do different things. So one of my favorite parts are these little pieces. Here's a little hidden panel of some small doors. And I keep all of my long dresses and things in this little segment to give me that five feet. Let me open this up so that you can see. And... As you can see, this is all of my clothing from my apartment. And so one thing that makes it really easy to store this much clothing is to have really thin hangers and you're able to get a lot in a small space. So this closet area here, the shelving itself is pulled directly from my closet, reconfigured as needed and snapped into the van, even though it's not intended for a van. And I have 150 items hanging here. And I know that because I bought 150 hangers. <laughs> and then on the top, I store things like my boots in, um, out of season storage and then I have like sweaters and that kind of thing in soft containers up at the top. So in here you'll see the majority of my clothing is hanging. As I said down at the bottom I have sets of drawers where I have all of my folded clothing and then my out of season storage on the upper shelf. And then on this side of the door I have a vanity because I like to stay fancy. And so because of that, I have all of my makeup storage on this side. And then I have a three quarter length mirror so that I can get, have some idea of what I look like on a daily basis. And then it's got a light on the top um, so that I can illuminate my face as I'm getting things done. And then I'm able to pull out makeup, set it on the kitchen counter here as needed, or keep it in its little storage area and put it on and get things adjusted as 
necessary. One thing that was important to me in the closet as well is to make sure that I had a place for my laundry because a lot of people forget that part. So on the side of the closet, I've got a little laundry pullout here. And because I have only completed the facade of my closets, I actually kept the sidewall open so that there's a laundry chute and I can reach from the bed and drop my laundry in here as needed. And then when it's time to do laundry, I just pull this little guy out and take it directly into the laundromat. On the opposite side of my storage wall is ta -da, the kitchen big space I know <laughs> so I've got storage on the uppers here I've got lots of counter space in the mids and then I have all my appliances at the bottom so on the top here in the upper storage I all have large cabinets like this with gas struts on them and then I do like pantry type items spices um, tuna fish you know the things that you use on a daily basis but maybe not all consuming or that need to be stored in a refrigerator. In the middle area here, these are the things that I probably use most frequently. All of my silverware, utensils, the chicory that I will drink in the morning instead of coffee. Your girl can't handle caffeine. And so at this countertop level here, I have 69 inches of counter space right here. And then once we add the extension on top of that, it's seven feet of counter space. So larger than most regular kitchens in a house, I wanted to make sure that I had room to spread out. And one way that I accomplished that is by hiding my stove under the counter rather than above. And so I've got a three burner Atwood range and it's got an oven here as well. And then I'm able to pop that closed, drop the countertop down, and all of my counter space is still available to me. Then I have a larger sink that's 10 inches deep and a cute little faucet up here. I wanted to make sure dishes could actually fit in the sink and that anything that came out of my little oven here could also fit into the sink as needed. And then on this side, I have the refrigerator. So one thing to note about this particular fridge is that this entire van is run on solar. And usually with mini fridges, especially your standard front opening mini fridge, they consume way too much power and you're not able to run them on solar, at least not in a van and be able to do anything else. One thing that makes this one special is that it's extremely low voltage, but the specific one is a winter 3.4 cubic um, refrigerator. And this one only uses, I wanna say 0.9 amps um, compared to everything else, which is two three four times the amount of energy so although this fridge does utilize about 50 percent of my energy i planned with the rest of my system to make sure that it could accommodate this load and i didn't have to get anything extra to be able to do it again the reason why i chose this particular fridge is because i wanted something that was front opening i wanted something that had a freezer because your girl likes ice cream and i wanted to make sure that i was spending my money on the solar system and not on a refrigerator And now we're in the back of the van. This is a huge multi-use space. And let's continue on with the storage because storage is a priority in here. We'll start down here. So under the kitchen and under this platform here is my shoe storage. You know I couldn't have all of that clothing and not have shoes to match. Come on now. So underneath the stove and underneath the um, sink area, there's some shoe storage there. And then there's a four foot drawer that runs all the way to the back of the van here that holds about 30 pairs of shoes. Again, I stay fancy. <laughs> Solo is great. Not having to share your space when you've shared your space majority of your life is fantastic. So whether someone's in a relationship or not, I would highly recommend traveling alone. <laughs> Um, it's been great going from place to place and just getting to explore on your own schedule and just kind of see what each town is about. But you're doing it like a local. You're not necessarily going to the tourist spots. You still have to find a place to do your laundry. You still have to find a place to go to the grocery store rather than always going to restaurants. But you can also um, just drive out into the middle of nowhere and talk to no one if you really don't feel like it. And during everything that's been going on, it's been ideal. as a woman of color, but as a black woman specifically, um, it's challenging. It's really challenging because there's a lot of um, implicit bias, not just racism, but just prejudice and bias in general. Um, most people don't believe that this van is mine. So a lot of the times when, when I come up or if something else, they assume that it belongs to someone else. They're looking for someone else who belongs to so They ask you why you have that van, but not in a curious what's going on inside kind of way. More of an accusatory is, you, are you trying to take this? 
and that's that's been a big challenge. Um, when they see that I have something, well, like this is a, a pro master, for for example, they're like, oh, that's a very expensive van. How can you afford that? And other people don't get asked that question. So that's been interesting. And then when I go, I have to be really cognizant of where I am and what towns I stop in um, because it's not safe for me. And so I'm usually safer in larger cities, but if I go into smaller, especially conservative towns or ones that are obviously because of things that are posted on walls or flags and different things, um, I make it a point not to stop because people look at me. I get stared at a lot. Um, some with curiosity, but I've been in parking lots in different places and people literally drive up and record me with their camera and like lean in and record me when I'm sitting in the front seat, just living. And you can't tell anything else is going on. And even if I, um, acknowledge that like hi what's going on here they don't speak they just record and continue on as if I'm not actually a person so I have to be just really cognizant of how many how much attention I draw to myself and it's not that it's the vehicle it's that it's me and um, I have a lot of different safeguards that I put in place so that I'm forgotten like I go to a place and you see me I might draw attention for a moment and then I try to disappear as much as I can but depending on the town sometimes I can't so that feeling like there's a target on your back all the time is the most challenging thing about man life really as a black person it's not even as much as a solo female I wish I could blame individuals for that but it's just conditioning it's social conditioning so it's it's just more about the history of this country and how people have been conditioned to behave I think um, with anyone, whether, whether it's racism or xenophobia or whatever else it is, when you sit down and actually have a conversation the way that you and I do now, most people don't have the same feelings about you as they do about what you represent. So some people suck, <laughs> but I, I don't think everyone intends to. I think. <laughs> so then when we get to this mid-level here, I'm sitting on two benches. Um, under this bench here is my entire solar system. I have a 2000 watt inverter. I have 200 amp hours of battery. And then I have three solar panels on the roof as well. And all that is connected and lives underneath this bench. So on the driver's side of the van under this bench, I have my full water system. And I've got a 33 gallon freshwater tank under there, a two and a half gallon Bosch water heater and an electric water pump. And then at this level, we've got some lounge area here, as you see, some soft cushions, some back pillows, and then a secondary workspace where I get some work done on the top as needed. But in case you didn't know, as I mentioned earlier, some of my background is in vocal coaching, vocal recording, voiceover, and that kind of thing. So when I need to, this area turns into a music slash um, recording studio. And one thing that was a priority for me is to make sure that when I felt like doing a little music, I ha had the ability to do a little music. So I built this table here that's floating on this lagoon mount so that I can move the table around as needed and if you notice the table's a little bit thicker than normal and that's because I wanted to store my piano in here so I've got all of my sheet music ready to go and then I have a 76 key keyboard in here to play as needed when I feel the need to record or when I just want to jam out so here in the back of the van one thing you'll notice is that there are no windows and there are no windows anywhere on the sides of the van. Yet, magically, I'm here in dappled sunlight. <laughs> and that is because of a three foot skylight that I've got up here. This is a three by two foot skylight. And not only is it a light, it is a point of egress. So I can pop that open. And when my bed is down, I can just hop on the bed and hop onto the roof as needed. It gives me some great ventilation. And then I also have a max air fan right above the kitchen that acts as an exhaust and also helps to move air throughout the van without having exterior windows. The bonus of having a skylight is that your view is always good. It's always good. When you have side windows, the reality of van life is you're probably in a Walmart parking lot, you're staring at a dumpster, you're parked behind some other car all kinds of views that you may not necessarily love, but the sky is always beautiful. <laughs> so having a skylight is where it's at for sure. Then as we get down here, I have more storage because again, priority is storage. And on this side, it's my office storage. And so I've got, you know, storage books, printer, equipment, that kind of thing. And on this side, I have overflow pantry type things. So I've got an instant pot in there, a crock pot, 
salad bowls, a heater. So that handles all of the upper storage that I have up here. And then here in the middle, you might be wondering, but where do you sleep? You've got all these different things. Where do you sleep? In most vans, a lot of people take all of their cushions from their couch and create that into a bed. That's a little labor intensive for me to do on a daily basis. So instead, I decided I wanted to have a bed that was mostly made all the time without having to move too many things. So these walls that you see here are not walls. They're my bed. I took a queen size mattress and sliced it in half and created two Murphy beds. One half of my bed is on the left hand side under the cabinetry and the other half here is on the right. Fold both sides of the bed down and voila, queen size bed. I added a greenery wall. I wanted to bring the outside in since I don't have windows as well. So these not real plants. Nobody can take care of a real plant in a van. Good luck to all of you who try. So I created a greenery wall here and then I have pockets in the door here that I use as like bedside table and art storage. What up Obama? <laughs> Being in a vehicle that's completely under your control and every moment of your day is decided by you and what your budget is and what your thought process is and what your mood is that day, I think everyone can, you know, do. For me, van life is self-care. It's the ultimate in self-care. I strongly believe that van life is for everyone. Um, maybe not the same way, maybe not for the same period of time. I think that everyone can benefit from spending, even if it were just two weeks, one time, hitting the road where everything you're doing is happening in this vehicle and you full on live. Even if you do that just one time, one summer, I think there's a lot that people could have gained from it that you'll learn a lot about yourself that you'll feel a lot of confidence in all the things that you overcome that seemed small before that um, or that seemed huge before rather and are you realize aren't so bad or that you can figure it out and spending time by yourself or just with your family without the outside world having as much of an influence on your day-to-day -day schedule the way that it does in a sticks and bricks i think is something that everyone can benefit from so i would encourage people to try for another black person, I would say we're out here. You think that it's you're by yourself. We are out here. We are not necessarily all over social media, although you know it's trendy to be black these days, so we might be on social media now. Um, but but there we're we're out here, and we want to connect with each other, and we do have to have a certain level of safety that other, even people of color, don't have to have because of the United States. Um, but in other countries, it's not always the same way, although it can be. I would say find your tribe and just do your research. Be aware of your surroundings and plan ahead. Um, maybe you won't be quite as spontaneous as everybody else's because of safety, but when you move through the world as a black person, you're always that way. You're always on high alert. Van life is, is it's no different. You just have everything that's important to you with you. <laughs> so do it and, and um, also don't have the misconception that if you live in a van that means you have to be camped out in the woods all the time that's an option be an outdoors person love it but if you love to be in the center of a city like your girl right here do that too there, there's a version of van life for every kind of person at any age any uh, ability level um, any background it, it is for everyone you just get to do it your own way for watching our video and for stopping by Tiny House Expedition. I'm Alexis. And I'm Christian. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And for more tiny home tours and stories, click the videos below. And join us on Patreon for bonus content. Including face-to-face -face conversations with us. <laughs> we hope to see you there. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.